I'm Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the most popular cities along Colorado's Front Range. These are some of the cities that we think are the best to live in along the state. According to the Colorado Department of Local Affairs, between 2011 and 2016, about 240,000 people moved to Colorado. It's a popular state, and for good reason. We have great things like the Rocky Mountains, which might be the most iconic mountain range in all of the United States. You will likely hear directions from locals about going towards the mountains, west, and going away from the mountains, which is east. Choosing the best city to live in along the Front Range, it isn't easy. Each town in Colorado offers a wide variety of pros and cons, and that's what I'm going to be discussing today, to help you make the best decision on where to live in Colorado. The good news, though, is that pretty much no matter where you live is going to be a great choice. Everywhere along the Front Range is unique and beautiful in its own way. The Front Range refers to the part of the Rocky Mountains that stretches from New Mexico to Wyoming and cuts through the heart of Colorado. This location makes it a perfect place for cities to be established at the foot of the mountain range. Colorado's Front Range Urban Corridor has a population of nearly 5 million people, and that's pretty much 9 tenths of the entire population of Colorado living along this urban corridor. When looking at the map of the Front Range, you can see how close each of these cities is to the mountains, some of them being a bit more than the others. They're located north and south along the entire range. And here's what you need to know about the most popular places to live in Colorado, from Fort Collins to Pueblo. Fort Collins. The northernmost city along the Front Range Mountains in Colorado, Fort Collins is a college town by nature. It's home to Colorado State University, and because of this, it's a great place to live for active families to flourish and travelers seeking adventure. Nestled up against the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, Fort Collins experiences four distinct seasons each year. Summers are usually warm and dry, with winters being moderately cold and snowy. And due to the city's recent expansion, a lot of the buildings are newer and the city has a young but very clean vibe. So what makes Fort Collins unique? Fort Collins is full of history, and this is still felt in the quaint charm of the buildings. Disneyland's main street was modeled after Fort Collins Main Street. Like stated, Fort Collins is home to Colorado State University, and this college helps the town feel young. This also adds to the walkability of the town and just how easy it is to get around here, which I think is pretty much true for pretty much any college town. But Fort Collins' claim to fame is that it is the capital of Colorado when it comes to beer, and that's actually saying something. It produces so much beer that it amounts to be about 70% of Colorado's total craft beer. So what is there to do in Fort Collins? Because of its location, the city of Fort Collins is easier to access to parts of Colorado that are a bit less explored. Just going west into the mountains, you'll find yourself in a pretty remote areas of Grand or Jackson County. And residents of Fort Collins don't mind feeling displaced from major cities, since Denver is only about an hour south, and enjoy getting outside whenever they can. Like other cities in Colorado, Fort Collins is well known for all of the outdoor activities it has to offer. Popular ones include kayaking and biking, camping, fishing, and kayaking on the Cache Laputa River. The most popular water destination in the area is the Horse Tooth Reservoir, which allows for boating, swimming, and other summer activities. It also has two public golf courses and the annual Flower Trial Garden, which is open from May to October. If you want to see amazing Colorado wildflowers, this event is a must visit. What are the best neighborhoods in Fort Collins? Old Town and Downtown, University Park, North Fort Collins, Terry Lake, Old Prospect, and Huntington Hills. One really cool thing about Fort Collins is it has quite a few lakes, so pretty much any neighborhood that you look at is going to have a body of water that's at least relatively nearby. Something that's very unique for Colorado. Just south of Fort Collins is the gorgeous city of Boulder. It's most well known for being the home of University of Colorado at Boulder. This makes it a college town to its core. Boulder has a large population of young professionals and families filling out the full-time residents. Keep in mind that Boulder is the most expensive city to live in of all the cities that are on this list. There's a high demand for housing and not much supply due to the fact that it's nestled right up against the flat irons and the foothills, so there's limited room to grow. 
And because of this, the size of the town is limited, which causes prices of real estate to skyrocket as popularity has grown over the past years. We actually lived in Boulder for three years, and so we were really able to understand and grasp the dynamics of the town. Uh, the town is small, but it has a ton of culture, art and food, and overall character. We particularly enjoyed the outdoor food and music festivals that happened there on a regular basis. So what makes Boulder unique? Again, due to the city's size, it's very easy to walk or ride a bike to get just about anywhere you need to go in the city. A very progressive town in terms of environmental impact, Boulder is always striving to use renewable energy resources. You will always find access to garden plots, recycling, upcycling options, as well as composting in nearly every residential neighborhood. The residents here also have a strong dislike for corporate companies, instead opting for small businesses. There are more bookstores per capita in this city than any other city in the entire country. Boulder is a great place to live for many reasons, including the proximity to mountains and miles of trails and bikeways. People that live in Boulder tend to be the true outdoor enthusiasts. And because of the location of the city to the mountains, wildlife is a common sight in town. Deer, raccoon, bears, just to name a few, aren't even an uncommon sight in Boulder. They take outdoor activities very seriously, with many people biking or walking to work, even in the snow. And biking is so highly regarded and practiced in Boulder that it is common to keep bike paths plowed and cleared of snow more regularly than the streets. True story. So what is there to do in Boulder besides ride your bike? <laughs> the Boulder Reservoir is a popular water destination during the summer months and allows for kayaking, boating, swimming, and more. Chautauqua Park is unlike any other park that you've been to, and it's home to the iconic Flatirons. These uniquely shaped mountains rise up slanted, striking against the landscape. They're such a cool sight. Boulder is also home to the Pearl Street Mall. And Pearl Street is also unlike any mall that you've been to. It's a four-block pedestrian mall playing host to many outdoor shops, restaurants, bars, and co-working spaces. Like we said, Boulder likes to do everything, but just outside. The city is also an excellent destination for beer brewing, coffee roasting, and food trucks. Boulder is parked right up against the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, so it's easy to explore right outside your door. What are the best neighborhoods in Boulder? There will obviously be more students near the university and the areas that are surrounded. There are a lot of people that are jammed into a very small space in Boulder. But the neighborhoods to note here are North Boulder, Flatirons, University Hill, Table Mesa Central, Boulder Foothills, Chautauqua, and Gun Barrel. Denver. Nicknamed the Mile High City, Denver is the capital of Colorado and it is the largest city on the Front Range. In 2021, it had a population of over three quarters of a million people living in the city itself. And in 2018, Denver was the 19th most populated city in the entire US. The city is home to CU Denver, University of Colorado at Denver. Young professionals are moving to Denver's neighborhoods in droves due to the relatively affordable housing and the adventurous outdoor lifestyle. It's centrally located in the middle of the state and the middle of the country. The location makes it very easy to jump on a plane and travel anywhere thanks to Denver International Airport. And we actually lived in Denver for about six months when we were testing it out to see if we wanted to live there. What makes Denver unique? After Fort Collins, Denver is one of the best cities in the state for beer lovers. Pretty much all of Colorado cities love beer. It has the highest number of microbreweries per capita. And the city is also home to many professional sports teams like the Broncos, Rockies, Avalanche, and the Nuggets. There are quite a few notable people and celebrities that make Denver their home. John Elway, who actually carried the Broncos into a few Super Bowls back in the late 90s, now calls Denver his home and he has several car dealerships and restaurants. Uh, the actor Tim Allen was born in Denver and he enjoys the state so much that one of his sitcoms is actually based here in Denver. So what makes Denver unique? There's good weather, great food, ease of access to the outdoors, and a great skiing nearby. Since Denver is centrally located within the state, it's close to many big ski towns like Aspen, Winter Park, and Skistone. Skistone and Keystone. Over the past decade, Denver has really started to feel like a metropolis, and that has all the good and bad things that come with it. What is there to do in Denver? Being a big city, there are many lifestyles possible in Denver depending on what you're looking for. It's home to the Denver Art Museum and Denver Museum of Nature and Science, my favorite which regularly hosts extraordinary exhibits from Claude Monet to Leonardo da Vinci. 
The Denver Union Station was built more than 150 years ago. Recently, it was refurbished and renovated into a mini shopping center, complete with restaurants, hotels, and bars. As a major city, Denver has nearly limitless stuff to do. Concerts and show are nightly, a thriving theater scene. Colorado has established itself as having just as dignified a food scene as any other young city. You can find food at restaurants from Michelin star chefs or even top chef contestants and winners. The Denver Botanic Gardens is an oasis in the middle of the city like nothing else. All year round, you can visit the gardens, indoors and out, to learn about the various plants and trees that are native to Colorado. Since Denver is growing so rapidly, there are countless shops, restaurants, bars, and activities for all ages any time of the day. You can find big chain hotels and places to eat, as well as boutique shops and custom unique hotels. This is truly a place for everyone. What are the best neighborhoods in Denver? So these suburbs to look at within Denver would be Lakewood, Littleton, Aurora, Centennial, Golden, Arvada, Westminster, and Cherry Creek. These are less neighborhoods, but actually suburbs, and add to and are overall considered Denver as a whole. Within each of these suburbs and Denver, you will find its own unique little town with its own history, quirks, and unique neighborhoods within. Castle Rock There are a lot of cities that can be considered a suburb of Denver, and Castle Rock is one of those. But the city has experienced incredible population growth recently. It also has great proximity to two major cities, being just 30 miles south of Denver and 40 minutes north of Colorado Springs. This makes it easy to commute to both cities without paying big city prices. Plus, there's ease of access to the mountains just to the west. Castle Rock is a bit of the best of both worlds, being far enough away from Denver to not feel like you're in the city, and with ease of access of getting outside and exploring nature but close enough that everything a city like Denver has is a mere few minutes drive from your front door. The people who tend to live in Castle Rock are young professionals to older families with kids who want to be closer to Denver, but not in the city itself. It's perfect for young professionals, as well as those starting families or already having kids. The city received its name after the prominent castle-shaped butte at the top of the hill near the center of town. So what makes Castle Rock unique? Through the early 2000s, Castle Rock earned a reputation as a family-friendly and affordable community with growth only expected to continue. It's less expensive to live here versus the cost of living in Denver, but a ton of resources and infrastructure have been poured and continue pouring into the city. It is an area on the upward move for sure. The city has a new town feel with many well-known shops, popular restaurants, and hotel chains being built every day. So what makes Castle Rock unique? Castle Rock doesn't have the large mountains, but it's more of a rolling hill kind of landscape. The mountains are further in the distance compared to cities like Colorado Springs, and the ground is dry and the weather is often windy and warm. What is there to do in Castle Rock? In recent years, Castle Rock has become even more popular thanks to Castle Rock Outlets, which hosts more than 100 name brand stores in the largest open air shopping center in the state and has even been called one of Colorado's top tourist destinations. Also available here are two well-maintained golf courses with stunning views of the mountains and waterways, Plum Creek and Red Hawk Ridge. Castlewood Canyon State Park is only a few minutes drive from downtown Castle Rock, and it's in close proximity to Chatfield's Farm open space and the Denver Botanic Gardens. What are the best neighborhoods in Castle Rock? The Meadows, Castlewood Ranch, Northeast Castle Rock, Castle Pines, and Keene Ranch. Castle Rock is only going to just keep on growing, so these neighborhoods now, I expect there to be quite a few more of these to come in the future. Colorado Springs. Popular with young families and retirees alike, Colorado Springs, aka The Springs, as locals call it, offers a small town feel with a lot of those big city amenities. The higher elevation leads to milder summers and sometimes harsher winters compared to the other cities along the Front Range. The city is home to UCCS, University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, as well as the base for the United States Air Force Academy. This brings in a lot of college students as well as military families looking to work and live in Colorado. It's a very family-friendly and relatively affordable, for now, place to live. A sizable portion of the city's residents are employed by the government at one of the many military installations in the area, the Air Force Academy, Schriever Air Force Base, and Peterson, just to name a few. 
Denver and Colorado Springs have both been consistently ranked as two of the top 25 cities to live in the country by US News and Report. This is where we live and where hashtag Colorado life is based out of. What makes Colorado Springs unique? Located just 75 miles south of Denver, Colorado Springs is a large city with lots of amenities. Even though the city of COS is technically the second largest city in the state, the county it resides in, El Paso County, is the most populated county in all of Colorado. This makes the Springs feel geographically very large and much more spread out than the other Front Range cities. Colorado Springs is actually much closer to the mountains than Denver, and it's where the famous Pikes Peak, or America's Mountain, is located. The main appeal to moving to Colorado Springs is that the housing market and cost of living here is still pretty affordable compared to Denver and other cities along the Front Range. The city offers ease of access to getting outside and hiking in nature, but still has that small town feel. The local homeschool community and library system are some of the best in the country, and there are endless educational courses and classes for both kids and adults alike. What is there to do in Colorado Springs? The Springs is home to the beautiful tourist destination called Garden of the Gods, a registered national landmark and popular hiking destination. The downtown area is booming with new restaurants, co-working spaces, and shops opening regularly. But it's also full of history and many old buildings that still remain intact to this day. Cheyenne Mountain Zoo is located in the neighborhood of Cheyenne Mountain and is the highest elevation zoo in the country. The animal exhibits are literally built into the side of the mountain. Residents who live in the springs enjoy a slower lifestyle relative to Denver, since the big city is just an hour's drive up north. What are the best neighborhoods in Colorado Springs? Similar to Denver, COS has suburbs and outlying towns that are considered part of Colorado Springs overall. Fountain, Monument, Manitou Springs, and Falcon are all distinct towns with distinct neighborhoods and their own unique feel and geography, but still part of the Springs as a whole. But some neighborhoods within the Springs proper would be Briargate, the Broadmoor, Rockerman, Old North End, West Colorado Springs, and Cimarron Hills. Pueblo. The southernmost city on our list, Pueblo offers quite a different feel from the others along the Front Range. It's located in what is called the High Desert part of Colorado. The landscape is made up of vast plains, desert lands, canyons, and mesas. Pueblo has a unique ecosystem and climate, being very much where you can find that southwest cuisine of peppers, chilies, melons, corn, and squash. And the city's proximity to the Arkansas River and the resources it brings and the ease of access to the San Luis Valley means Pueblo gets some of the most unique and fresh produce all of Colorado has to offer. The average cost of a home in Pueblo is about half of what you'll pay in Denver for the same house. Looking at other cities along the Front Range, Pueblo is the least expensive. The environment and culture of Pueblo is completely unique and unlike any of the other cities on this list. It is full of history and a vibe all its own. So what makes it unique? Pueblo is one of the largest steel producing cities in the US and is often called the Steel City. The original El Pueblo trading post was how the city got its name. The El Pueblo History Museum offers a recreated 1860s trading post and other artifacts detailing the city's past. After decades of decline of its manufacturing industry, Pueblo is coming back with a boom with its redefined economy. Pueblo was once Mexico's northernmost outpost when half of Colorado was part of the country of Mexico. In fact, the Arkansas River that runs through the center of the town was the border of Mexico's territory. To this day, the population of Pueblo is about 50% Hispanic. And many of the Pueblo and Colorado Springs residents commute to work in either city since the drive is fairly straightforward, even if it does take about an hour each way. What is there to do in Pueblo? The Pueblo Reservoir is a popular summer destination for its residents and the surrounding cities like Colorado Springs. It is a much appreciated getaway from the summer heat and allows for kayaking, boating, swimming, and wildlife viewing. This body of water is often referred to as a fishing hotspot by locals. The people of Pueblo enjoy many warm summer days that Colorado offers each year. The culture and food seen here are hot and spicy, much like the weather. And Pueblo is home to the annual Colorado State Fair and the Chili and Frijoles Festival. 
It is also home to the historic Arkansas River Rock, which is an urban development with boat rides, art displays, public events all year round. What are the best neighborhoods in Pueblo? Because Pueblo is laid out along the Arkansas River, it's really the only city along the Front Range that spans east to west rather than north to south. So in these neighborhoods, you'll find very distinct geography just going a short distance. But these neighborhoods include University Park, Beulah Valley, Eagle Ridge Estates, Pueblo West, St. Charles Mesa, and Belmont. Alright, that was a lot of information that I just threw at you, and I hope that you were able to absorb some of this. Thanks so much for listening, I really appreciate it, and until next time, bye bye If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your support. And to get new videos from us every week, be sure to hit that subscribe button.